morning and welcome back to the lecture series on narrative mode and fiction. We are discussing magical realism. So, uh, talking about magical realism, we have to understand the process of defamiliarization. The art of magical realism entails uh, presenting the object in such a way that the normal becomes unfamiliar. It draws much on Russian formalist uh, Viktor Shklovsky's ideas of the literary technique defamiliarization. So, the term defamiliarization was first used by Viktor Shklovsky uh, in uh, his work Art as Technique. That is where he had defined uh, defam defamiliarization for the first time. Uh, it is a process that seeks to present an object in an unfamiliar way. The idea behind defamiliarization is to use language in such a manner that uh, the reader or the spectator does not become uh, adapted to the presence of the object and uh, ceases to experience its artfulness. So, in other words, defamiliarization is uh, letting the uh, reader uh, or the audience remember that the art is an art, it is not real, right. There is a difference between the fiction and the fact out there. This is also a way of understanding the artfulness, the art, the stylistics, the drama that has gone into the making of an artwork. It is not merely transcription of the world as we see it. So, defamiliarization distinguishes ordinary usage of language from poetic usage, right. Poetic language renders a work of literature its literariness, right. Um, as a result, the language has the power to play on the reader's perceptions. So, we come, we bring our ordinary perceptions uh, uh, to the artwork and these perceptions are uh, altered through the power of the art, right. Uh, and that is the poetic usage of language, therein lies the artfulness. Defamiliarization is therefore a literary technique of presenting common things in an unfamiliar fashion through which the reader can gain new perspectives and see the world uh, from a different angle. So, Russian formalism and magical realism uh, share a very close relationship. Uh, Russian formalism predates the Brechtian concept of alienation effect or uh, something that um, Bertolt Brecht calls as uh, Verfremdung. Verfremdung is a term he uses uh, in his epic theatre, right. Uh, through Verfremdung, or the alienation effect, the object of art is seen as the revolutionary goal uh, of making the audience aware of uh, the institutions and social formulae which are not in inherent, not uh, natural. So, uh, through art we are uh, we are making the audience aware that the social institutions and the social formulae that uh, braces a society together have nothing natural about it. They are not eternal, they are not inherent, but they are historical and they are uh, artifacts, they are man-made and so to that end they are capable of change through human intervention, through human action. Alienation aims at disrupting the passive complacency of the audience and forcing them into a critical analysis of art as well as that of the world. Now, in a very similar way to that of alienation effect of Brecht, uh, Shlovsky uh, had already uh, earlier understood the aim of poetry. This is coming even before uh, Brecht coins this term uh, alienation uh, effect. So, Shlovsky is looking at the aim of poetry. What does poetry uh, strive to do? It defamiliarizes that with which we are overly familiar and so it creatively deforms the usual, the normal as a way of inculcating 
a new childlike uh, non jaded vision in us so the main aim of literature uh, both according to formalism and according to magical realism is uh, disrupting the ordinary linguistic discourse and causing uh, some estrangement now the poet aims at disrupting stock responses the way we are uh, almost we are pre-programmed to respond to our immediate society the immediate occurrences around us the poet uh, wants to bulk that and uh, revisit that uh, habit and generate a heightened awareness uh, to restructure our ordinary perception of reality as a way of seeing the world instead of numbly recognizing it now formalism requires that poetic discourse be seen as fundamentally different in its modus operandi from a uh, discourse of any other kind um, and this is where we are getting uh, the term literariness for the first time poetry's aim not being practical or cognitive like ordinary usage of language but it is not concerned with transmitting information or formulating knowledge that is not poetry's aim poetic language is deliberately uh, self conscious and the meaning is embedded in the form itself it emphasizes itself as a medium over and above the uh, message it contains so it characteristically draws attention to itself and systematically emphasizes its own linguistic qualities uh, consequently words in poetry are not simply vehicles of thoughts right uh, but objects in their own right so uh, in a poem according to uh, ferdinand this is you the words uh, cease to become signifier are signified right because uh, they are not uh, being used in the traditional sense uh, but they can have uh, a number of significations associated with them depending on the interpreter so the word being interpreted uh, in a context by someone who has uh, his or her own cultural baggage and thereby a perception formed from there so a poem the self same poem could be read in 10 different ways and all these analyses could be equally correct so making strange ranks as a central preoccupation of formalism and a good deal of formalist analysis of literature consists of this uh, account of uh, different uh, conditions different ways in which Mm, austrinani or uh, defamiliarization can take place uh, so these are conditions of literariness a term that is used for the first time by roman jacobson uh, and literariness uh, can be recognized and distinguished from other modes and manners of linguistic uh, communication so literary language not only makes strange it does not only engenders uh, strangeness it is strange in itself so derealization defamiliarization and fabulation all of these form the basic skeleton of magical realism derealization is the ability of language to create a sensory experience through mimesis wherein the world is ultimately represented as an altered place from the reality uh, that the reader knows the reality that the reader is coming from even before reading the work or experiencing the artwork so de realization causes a state of detachment from the surroundings and results in uh, corrupting or destabilizing previous understandings of the world uh, by making the people and objects around seem unreal through derealization a more uh, deeply seated truth which was hitherto hindered by the superficial appearance of a perceived reality is uh, revealed unfurled manifested so defamiliarization is the artistic expression of alienation of making the reader feel apart from the world 
Very often in magical realism, this is done through introducing something mystical and revealing the world as something uh, unexpectedly unfamiliar. So the magical realist constructs a setting that mirrors an unorthodox worldview. To be able to accept this new setting, the reader must be uh, displaced and broken of habit. So this is also something that E.M. Foster is saying, uh, the resilience of the reader, right? How far can we, uh, how far are we ready to travel with uh, fantasy, uh, with the fantastic uh, writing, fantastic meanings, uh, if we are too much rooted to our ordinariness with our jaded vision, then uh, that would not be possible. Uh, the, the alternate uh, world and our believability, our, our ability to believe that is uh, kind of frustrated when we are too much rooted in our ordinariness. Defamiliarization uh, involves the textual poetics of surrealism and it exploits the magic of metaphor, uh, ignoring reason and logic. Uh, however, while surrealism categorically uh, resists any sort of interpretation, the, the magical realist images, uh, albeit their initial magical uh, or wondrous aura and madness associated with them, tend to reveal uh, psychological, social, uh, political uh, motivations after some degree of scrutiny. So we have here an example of Whitehall Gombrowicz's uh, Pornographia. So in uh, Pornographia, Gombrowicz uh, depicts the grotesque uh, story of a man that has become a child because uh, the other people constantly treat him thus. So here we also have the example of Nikolai Gogol's short story, The Nose, uh, where a minor uh, czarist bureaucrat's nose takes off to pursue its own career in St. Petersburg. Now, George Louis Borges's works have this effect of defamiliarization and a conscious uh, polycynic texture where different viewpoints of any given thing at any given point are available. We are also uh, interested in fabulation in the context of uh, our discussion on magical realism. So what is fabulation? Fabulation is this practice of uh, telling fables uh, which are chiefly understood as stories involving uh, talking animals. However, unlike the familiar uh, formulaic fables that are used more often as tools for moral instruction, uh, rather than as art, fabulation uh, in magical realism attempts at expressing the complexities of the world, the layeredness of the world, as well as a glimpse at its uh, politics and history. If we look at Kafka's metamorphosis, um, it incorporates all the three aspects the aspects of uh, derealization, defamiliarization and fabulation where Gregor Samsa uh, metamorphoses into an insect, into a bug. So uh, fabulation uh, causes Samsa to transform into this non-human creature. Defamiliarization makes the reader unaware of his surroundings and uncertain of who or what might get transformed the next moment. And with derealization, the reader becomes convinced that Gregor Samsa has in fact uh, become a bug and that he is no longer a human. So in this context, we need to discuss that there is a separate genre called Canadian magical realism. Uh, we have a lot of Canadian uh, magical realist writers such as uh, Timothy Findlay who is writing Not Wanted on the Voyage. Uh, Robert Kreutz's uh, What the Crow Said, uh, Howard O'Hagan's Tejon, Sheila Watson's Double Hook and so forth. So magical realism is um, also close to Tizid Todorov's idea of the fantastic as existing uh, during a reader's hesitation between the uh, uncanny events which are unexplicable by the natural laws of the 
tactile universe. And so the marvelous that requires some alteration, some uh, extrapolation, some uh, you know revisiting of some of these laws. The textual project of magical realism involves a linguistically uh, bound attempt at increasing the capabilities, uh, the resilience of uh, reality and the reader's uh, believability. And yet the desire is to go beyond the unity of a realist text. So, in 1927, uh, magical realism had made a turn away from German painting into Spanish literature and uh, Latin America by being translated in Jose Ortega y Gasset's uh, Revista de Occident. So, authors like uh, George Luis Borges and uh, Gabriel uh, Garcia Marquez adopt uh, Rose writings and they reappropriate magical realism into literary art and from there on a new genre proliferates through the Latin American boom. So, we have someone like uh, Angel Flores who insists a Latin American uh, exclusivity to the genre of magical realism and uh, associates it with the artworks produced during the Latin American boom. And Matthew Stretcher argues that uh, magical realism is a postmodern commodity. So, it does not belong only to Latin America per se, but it is uh, a postmodern community that belongs to the world and its influence, uh, progression and uh, utilization are adopted through translation and practice by both uh, uh, Latin American as well as non-Latin American writers. So, the influences and effects of magical realism are uh, available, are visible in artworks both uh, Latin American as well as uh, non-Latin American writers from the world over are using this uh, artistic technique to refer to the new world phenomena. Now, Ray versus Coney also argues that magical realism was a particularly uh, Latin American literary movement. So, uh, versus Coney says that uh, magical realism actually combines the European reality uh, with the anthropological aspects of America. So, similarly, uh, Usler Pietri and Alejo Carpentier recognized that uh, Latin American literature had made a departure from its European influences and had begun to document the flora and the fauna of the American uh, continent. So, Carpentier, for example, believes that the fantastic was not to be discovered by undermining or surpassing a reality with theoretical structures or through manufactured images that do not belong to uh, Latin America originally, such as in uh, surrealism. Instead, um, the magical churn out of the Latin American, uh, the Latin American history, uh, geography, people, habits, literature, uh, myth, and uh, politics. Cuban author Alejo Carpentier's uh, 1949 novel, The King of This World, El Reino de Este Mundo, in uh, 1957, provides an account of Haitian revolution. So, the novel emphasizes the role that uh, Afro-Caribbean beliefs and cultural practices uh, played in uh, motivating the initial slave revolt. So, he is, here he is talking about different uh, very specific practices such as even the voodoo spiritualism. The novel foregrounds elements of the fantastic against an otherwise uh, realist uh, narrative and it articulates a uniquely Afro-Caribbean cultural consciousness that does not share the western worlds, the western cultures, normative rationality. The fantastic and the magically real plays a role in highlighting and exploring cultural differences and, and in evicting uh, cultural disjunction. So, the fantastic and the magically real appear most uh, prominently at those moments where the two 
different world views, uh, two different possibilities, the Western and the Latin American uh, meet, clash over the interpretation of particular events. For example, the Western culture's utilitarian wealth yielding imperative is opposed to the human animal uh, contact and the sympathy that uh, informs these relationships. So, boundaries are not so sharply drawn in the case of the uh, Latin American uh, culture. So, the ethos are very different. Um, uh, the, the way of treating uh, the, the world outside or the way of treating uh, the non-human world uh, is very different in Latin America from the Western values, right? Uh, it is not necessarily a homocentric society. So, the value systems are quite apart from one another. Carpentier's essay on the marvelous real in America talks about this human reality of the new world referring uh, to the post-colonial world which is intrinsically marvelous and um, cannot adequately uh, be represented by either modern western literature's realist narrative mode or the uh, literary strategies um, adopted by surrealism. Uh, the marvelous real is the authentic expressive idiom of the peoples and cultures of the new world. So, they are using this marvelous real uh, that can carry their ethos, uh, their culture, cultural values better. So, for Carpentier, the fantastic in the Americas is a very real presence and it informs an individual's everyday lives. In the words of Carpentier, the marvelous uh, real is found at every stage in the lives of men who inscribed dates in the history of the continent and who left the names that we still carry." Unquote. So, in the kingdom of this world, uh, Carpentier uh, depicts the French colony of uh, saint domingue and uh, later the state of Haiti. It, it includes fantastic elements uh, such as witchcraft, uh, animal metamorphosis and even ghastly apparitions. And each of these uh, elements, uh, you know, are accepted as factual by the novel's characters. These are part and parcel of their everyday life, not really something that takes off from the real. They live in a different real actually. So, these magical intuitions into the narrative are markers of the marvelous reality of Afro-Caribbean life. The fantastic elements uh, primarily appear when the narrative adopts the perspective of its black characters and uh, highlights the rupture between the novel's European and Afro-Caribbean modes of uh, thinking and existing. Frederick Jameson would uh, note that the possibility of magical realism as a formal mode is constitutively dependent on a type of historical material in which disjunction is uh, structurally present. So, magical realism inhabits in a disjunction between two world systems uh, at the level of uh, a works and artworks uh, form and content. So, magical realism depends on a context that betrays the overlap or the coexistence of a pre-capitalist with nascent capitalist or technological features. Magical realism is a formal effect that results from a text's uh, juxtaposition and interfacing. Uh, so, juxtaposing and interfacing of two ways of knowing and being. Magical realist features emerge in the narrative uh, depiction of specific historical circumstances in two distinct modes of production and therefore two fundamentally different worldviews. We have two world systems simultaneously existing in the same physical and uh, temporal space. So, the magical realist uh, narrative modes exposition of this socio-historical dichotomy uh, is instrumental in exploring cultural differences and post-colonial themes. It speaks to the topics of racism, the topics of, uh, uh, you know, feminism, 
so so what happens when two world views uh, clash what happens to the categories such as the gender the race ethnicity uh, different religions different languages uh, different habits and habitat so the fantastic elements in the kingdom of the world function as a literary device that deals with the problematization of this coexistence of two different orders two different world views and thereby two different realities here i would like to stop today and i'll meet you again with uh, another round of discussions thank you